Hallelujah, and welcome to New Faith Baptist Church International Bible Study during COVID-19 in 2021. We are going through the book of Exodus. We are excited that what the Lord is showing us throughout the text, and we are starting today in Exodus chapter 8. I am Reverend Dr. Alexis Felder, First Lady and Minister of Ministry Operations. Reverend Greg Powell, Pastoral Care. Reverend Sellers Vine, Minister of Justice. And if you hear a bark in the background, Nora has a new baby. <laughs> Cinco Prince Felder. Mm. <laughs> yes. I said, well, should you put Prince first, Prince Cinco? She was like, no, <laughs> it's fine. He's still a prince. <laughs> so, he said, yeah, I come so first. We, he gets my name first. <laughs> that's Her right. Her birthday. That's right. <laughs> right. Five stands for grace. So <laughs> praise the Lord. Exodus 8. Let's get started. Exodus 8, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord says. Take, let my people go so they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and your bedroom and in, onto your bed, into the houses of your officials and on your people, into your ovens and kneading troughs. The frogs will go up on you and your people and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up in the land of Egypt. Mm. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same thing by their secret arts. Arts. They also made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So we are now into entering to the series of plagues that eventually will end up in the death of many Egyptians. <laughs> you know, we, we ended our last week with an interesting question um, about the water being turned into blood. And after the text said that God turned all the water in the Nile and the pots and everything into blood, I asked the question, well, what water did the, mag the magicians turn into blood? And if the Bible said that they dug for drinking water. So there was extra, there was water to be found that was not blood. And so we were discussing that. And once again, I think it's a mindset issue. I'm not exactly sure Pharaoh didn't turn that drinking water into blood, <laughs> just to prove a point. <laughs> mm. You know, when a person has a, a, a bad mindset, a negative mindset, a destructive, a narcissistic mindset, they will destroy what's good. You know, and, and, and hurt themselves, as we say, um, what is the colloquialism? Um, shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> and so, you know, and so I'm not exactly sure, um, but we've been pondering that over the week. And we found some people who said, you know, they purchased water from Gershom, they purchased water from other places. Um, and, and then we had some that said that this was the water that they turned into blood, the, the um, new drinking water. I'm apt to say that it was the new drinking water simply because his mindset his mindset, he was so driven to fight a fight that he could not win, that he didn't care what he destroyed, who he hurt, as long as he was able to prove his point. And so here we are again with Pharaoh. Your water has now been turned to blood <laughs> and you still won't send his people <laughs> to worship him. And so we are into this series of plagues now, and now it's frogs. Symbolic of one of the gods that they worshiped, the God with the frog head. And so the Lord is showing them Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, or Adonai Elohim. He's showing him that he is the superior being, but he won't let it go. And was it, was it an old gospel song? Your arms are too short to box with God, or is that a play? <laughs> Both. Uh, yeah, I think it is both. both yeah. Amen. Because sometimes you don't get it. You know, the Lord said it and you heard it twice. So, <laughs> and so here we are. You know, Pharaoh keeps pushing his agenda, even though he knows it's about to bring destruction. He keeps pushing his agenda, even though he knows that he's not winning. He keeps pushing his agenda. So the fish die, the water turns into blood, and he goes into the place, goes into the palace, like, yeah, whatever. My, ma my magicians can do it. And so this series of, of plagues is going to end into a lot of deaths. And that's what happens when a person won't surrender. 
you end up driving yourself off the cliff and all of those who are willing to ride with you. Sometimes it's not good to be a rider, <laughs> especially if it's a kamikaze plane and so, <laughs> or a pilot. And so it's, um, this is what Pharaoh is on. And I don't think he realizes it, but this is what Pharaoh's on. And he's in a, and he's in a world of trouble now and he doesn't realize it. You know, I, when you're just when you're talking about the 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 gods, you know that or that this particular god that uh, 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 God is addressing, <laughs> you know, and 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 showing him that he he's nothing, uh, their god with the frog head, uh, it it just kind of, and, and you said that that Pharaoh, he's he's the agenda of Pharaoh has never it's just hadn't it hadn't stopped pushing yet. It just hadn't stopped pushing because you have people who are literally getting surgeries and stuff put in their head to make them look like frogs. And, and I know this is kind of way left, but, you know, and, and, you know, and just, you know, you have people just kind of really, you know, gravitating to even deforming their body into to look like animals, you know, uh, even today. You know, people put so, horns in their heads. I mean, they put horns in their heads. Yeah, yeah you're right. You know, yeah. and, and, and the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And so God is able to use any and everything yeah. um, to get his point across. Mm -hmm. And so when he when he made it impossible for the fish to breathe in the water, you know, and, and it was and the fish die, you know, they Pharaoh didn't get the message. And so God is, it's like, he's walking up the stairs to him and he's, you know, he's like, okay, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. Oh, you're going to keep talking. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming again. It's not good to be on a come. Make sure you know who you're riding with and, and where they're going. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know where they're going. And it's important to pray and to fast. So you know where they're going because you may be on a kamikaze flight with a kamikaze pilot. And you know what happens with them, Reverend Vines. Tell us what happens with kamikaze uh, pilots. What happens to kamikaze pilots? Yeah. They, they, kill, they, they kill themselves. Right. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 kill, they kill themselves. Their they mission themselves. is. Yeah, is That's to kill right. yourself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. After they've made their strike, their, their yeah. mission is to die. Yeah. And so this is what Egypt is on a kamikaze flight and they don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people that follow the mindset of a Pharaoh, you know, you know, and the mindset of the gods, even the, the, the activity of the gods that they worship, you know, it, you, it's a, it's a, you're a kamikaze. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, you, you can't remain in that because if you remain in that, you know, it's it's sure destruction, and unless repentant repentance come, and that's oh. what we're that's and 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 Pharaoh refused to repent. He kept hard. Now he's harding in his heart. Is he, you know, I ain't gonna repent. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna do it. The type of heart that would enslave a group of people anyway. Yeah. Right, and so the lesson had to be taught for enslaving them anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when God says, "I'm gonna harden his heart some more." I'm not going to let him see it a different way because mm -hmm. th this was his decision in the first place. So I'm going to make him stick with his decision. I, again, a reprobate mind. And so once he turns you over to that reprobate mind, then yeah, he lets it go. He lets it go. He lets it continue to get harder to let it get you. Cause this is what you said. You claim you want it. This is your appetite. This is what you desire. This is the way you want to see it. I'm, I keep, I'm reminded of the guy who was attempting to commit suicide and he parked his truck on the railroad track. And as the trains were coming, he decided he wanted to live. He didn't like his life, but he decided he wanted to live and he got out of the way, but the plane, the trains still derailed and he, he, get, he got double life in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so you didn't like your life. <laughs> you want to live? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here you go. You're alive, but since you didn't like the one I gave you, do you like this one now? Mm -hmm. And so we have to really be careful, especially during this time of Thanksgiving, to be thankful for what we have and who we are and where we are, um, to be envious or jealous 
of anyone is to tell God that you're not pleased with who he, what he's done in your life and who he's created you to be and his plans for your life. Um, you know, people always think that the oil um, comes free. <laughs> mm. You know, they don't know the story behind the anointing, you know. And so um, because someone makes it look easy doesn't mean it's your calling and doesn't mean you can do it. Mm -hmm. You may get consumed doing it as Pharaoh would get consumed pretending to be a god. And so it's important for us to be thankful during this time, you know, to be thankful each and every day, um, but to reflect this time during the time that we set aside as a nation to be thankful, to be in agreement um, that what the Lord has done in our lives. We don't have everything we want, but we have everything that we need. We are healthy. We are not as healthy as we desire, but it's not as our fault. <laughs> some of it's hereditary. Some of it's our fault. You know, but agree with heaven Thy kingdom come Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven and you and i are made of the earth so that mm -hmm. kingdom come Thy will be done in my life as it is in heaven until all have heard i know i added something to the scripture they say you ain't supposed to do that <laughs> but <laughs> but he tells to take the gospel to the utmost parts of the world come off um come here with your science grip <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, content. okay, they're all in the bring heavens. The okay. Here, but, oh, <laughs> let me bring this, uh, let me bring the scientific perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. The Lord is the greatest scientist. Okay. The earth is the Lord's. Man, we Absolutely. Better, we better agree. acknowledge that. Uh, that's why I love science. Um, the more I learn, the more I learn about 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 the, the, the one, the one the power love. Of God. So so Yahweh sends his word. Uh, again, the pattern follows the pattern that's that of, of the of the plague narrative uh, to Pharaoh via Moses. Um, to deliver to Pharaoh, send my people to worship me. And, and keep in mind that this, this is an enormous provocation um, on behalf of Moses, on behalf of the people, on behalf, of course, of, of Yahweh, um, that, that this is uh, because this is about Pharaoh, but it also about, it's also about what Pharaoh represents. Pharaoh represents systems of oppression um, that they're battling against. Um, note that they never name who this Pharaoh is. Pharaoh is just a generic word for king. Um, and, so, um, and, and so Yahweh sends, he's escalating the situation. Um, from the scientific perspective, it's important to note uh, that, that uh, and, and as we, um, delve into how these scriptures were written in the in the seventh century as we delve into how these things were formulated and then um, escalated through divine intervention into an, into uh, liberation for the oppressed that that most of these pray, plagues have uh, precedence in the natural world in the natural occurrences of, of Egypt um, you know that they, the the uh, now turned red with blood uh, was often caused by algae or flag flagellates which will uh, um, which will turn it blood red, kill the fish. You know the mm -hmm. fish, uh, uh, the insects come to. Last week we dealt with the plague of the of the gnats and the flies. The insects come, they feed on the fish. You know, then you have a plague of flies. Uh, you know, the the, the uh, frogs come and feed on the insects. You know, they're driven out the water. Now you got a oh. whole lot of frogs. But what we have here, so the point is that God is operating within human history, within human culture, within human aspirations and and sadness and and pain and depression and 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 desire to be free. God is operating within that, and He's amplifying uh, what He's already created um, mm -hmm. in, the, in in this in the context of, of of this world and and this particular situation. And so, uh, and, and so the the, the the you know tell Pharaoh that the next thing is going to be the frogs. Pharaoh says, so the, you know later for you the 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 flaw, the the, uh, the frog. This time, however, um, if, are we there yet? No, not we're yet. not. Okay, never mind. Egypt did have what this represents, them going out and worshiping the Lord, is a severing of their psychological and spiritual attachment, their spiritual bond with their oppressor. Um, they are going outside of Egypt, outside of Pharaoh's authority, outside of Egypt's political uh, hegemony, out, outside of, of their reach into the wilderness, which is a which is uh, has the connotation of a lawless area, of a place, in other words, outside, completely outside any other control other than that of Yahweh, to go and worship me. So it represents them severing their ties, not only their political ties, but their spiritual, psychological, and theological ties with their oppressor. And this is a provocation that the system cannot uh, tolerate. 
uh, because systems always operate to sustain themselves, no matter what they are. And so um, in, in addition to that, the whole notion of the frogs, speculatively, um, there was a god, uh, one of the gods, uh, their creator gods, uh, Kunum, um, uh, in, in Egypt, cosmology assisted in the birth of infants, was kind of considered a source of life or, or a, uh, a giver of life. And, and of course, again, all of this is, 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 in, is in absolute rebellion, absolute revolutionary um, uh, um, uh, initiation, um, struggle against the, 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 the oppressor to liberate God's people. And, and not just liberate them politically, but to liter liberate them holistically. And you know, it's interesting because yeah. frogs are what a, a um, amphibians, right? Amphibians. amphibians. Mm -hmm. So they're land and water. <laughs> and so he's letting them know, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> you know, and so, but once again, I, I, you, you have to see the Lord's mercy. You have to see his mercy. You have to see his long suffering because he could have easily just wiped them out. Right. And he didn't. He didn't. He um, continued to to do the dance with Pharaoh to to prove to him, you know, it was a the battle of the gods. I know it's not like Spartacus, <laughs> the battle of the gods, you know. And so he was showing them that, you know, I can do something beyond your capacity. Your, your fertility goddess can't even help you right now. And Pharaoh was kamikaze. He was kamikaze. And so that mindset, you got that mindset. We must change our mindset. If we're going to obtain the things of God, we can't allow people to push us into resentfulness and bitterness and and, and envy and jealousy and rage and, and, and things of that nature. Because if you, if you do, then you can't reap the harvest that the Lord has for you. If he can get you out of joy, because in his presence, there's what? Fullness. Fullness of joy. So you ain't in his presence if you ain't got no joy. That's right. And so, and where's the harvest? The harvest is in his presence. I know we call him the Lord of the harvest. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings forth the harvest. He's the one, the, the Ruah. <laughs> and so when you, um, the paraclete, you know, I had to throw that out there because that's the name of the, our place. <laughs> Paracletos. And so, but if you, you want what God has for you, you must maintain your joy. Check your mindset in. That self-monitoring is what we call it in psychology. Self-monitoring evaluating your decisions and the point of departure from which they come. Checking yourself. You know, we want to self-reflect. What about self-monitor? What is my motivation? Why am I doing this? What is the outcome? What is the outcome for everyone, not just for you? Because see, Pharaoh has these people, a lot of innocent people are about to lose everything because Pharaoh has an agenda. And because God's letting Pharaoh, turning Pharaoh over to his agenda. So don't get turned over to your agenda. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. you see the outcome. Whenever God turns someone over to his agenda, Saul, whenever God turns someone over to their agenda, huh? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar saw it a multitude of times. Well, who's this God that can do what? Isn't it what it, the sun dialed back, right? Was that Nebuchadnezzar? The sun dialed back, he noticed it. I can't remember who it is. The dial, yeah. sun dialed back, he noticed it, one of the battles. I think it happened twice in the text, actually. And so, you know, and he was like, who is that? I hmm. saw that. Hmm. We saw that. And so we, if a God can has the capacity to do that, how dare you continue on your path? So yeah, you end up on all fours, running around like a beast in the field. Whenever he turns you over to your own demise, your own agenda, then you end up with what your agenda really looks like when you ain't in full control of it no more. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's so important that we 
during this time and the time that we are living in and the time that we're in that we that we be very intentional about reconnecting with this history you know of of God being God you know um, him showing himself mighty him proving himself sovereign you know and omniscient and you know all encompassing <laughs> you know to 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 do these things you know because this is this is a part this is a part of our reality. This is a part of our history as a people, you know? And I think it's important, especially now, because there's so much going on, you know, um, where, where that history has been diminished to such a degree that we don't even acknowledge it, you know, to a large degree because people are just doing whatever they want to do, you know? And I think it's really important that we, you know, just, you know, take, Take some time to reevaluate, you know, uh, uh, of this history that 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 we were that we are part of that was a part of us, you know. It's uh, so we can get a, a different mindset as we move ahead, and as time being fulfilled and the possibility of things to come. So we need to kind of, you know, we 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 need to we need to put some attention to this and 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 let it reshape our thinking. I, I agree totally. We have to because God is having fun here. He didn't, he didn't have to call a powerful army. He didn't have to send the, the host of angels. He just used his ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his ecosystem to enact ecosystem. justice. That's yeah. right. And so, you know, he didn't have to, he didn't use any of the things that we've seen him do in other instances where he was fighting. You know, when Hezekiah, um, when they were, when the Syrians were outside of the gates and, and they woke up. And he sent an angel and he slew how many? Mm. One angel slew 200,000, I think it was. It was a great number. It was a great number. He didn't even use, he didn't even use the heavenly host. Mm -hmm. You know, he used the ecosystem. <laughs> As Greg so eloquently pointed out earlier. Yes, he, did, he definitely, he, he definitely did that. That's right. Mm. And so he, 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 didn't, he didn't have to. So this is God's humor right here. Mm. This is how weak your human efforts are compared to what I do and who I am. That I can use the natural things that keep you alive. Because it's the ecosystem. If the ecosystem isn't working, we end up in the land of the lost. <laughs> Jurassic Park. You know, those kinds of things. If the ecosystem isn't working, right? You know, we all don't want a cold winter, but we know the importance of a cold winter. Mm -hmm. Because it kills off the bacteria, the germs, and that's right. The insects don't come out. They're not, you know, looking you eye to eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're looking you toe to eye mm -hmm. <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of eye to eye. Right. So, because we mm -hmm. know in Africa, we see spiders this big. Their bodies are this big. Their legs are, you're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. oh, you never mm -hmm. seen nothing like that over here. No. And so <laughs> the ecosystem is important, but God is using yeah. that as his army, as his weapon, mm -hmm. as his sword. Mm -hmm. to to defeat Pharaoh. So this is a, a battle with humor in it for the Lord because he's uh, I'm using the very thing you need to, to exist mm -hmm. to defeat you. And mm -hmm. so I think this is, um, mm -hmm. this is funny. But the other piece I want to point out quickly and then I'll go because Reverend Powell has it look like it's Thanksgiving. Hurry up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the occult power here. I mean, we don't want to talk about witchcraft and wizardry. We don't want to talk about spells and enchantments and dark powers or evil powers because dark is beautiful. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, um, we must understand that we are fighting sometimes against altars that have been laid long before we were even born with our great, 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 great grandparents that said none will rise, all will will fall you know no one will have wealth there no one's marriage will last you know people will go when people are so vengeful when they're so bitter and so angry when they want revenge so bad they 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 tip into that 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 area of wickedness and 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 so this is what we see we have to and the body of christ has to accept the fact that there's evil powers in the world because we don't want to accept it we don't want to accept it. And so when we're praying our Sesame Street prayers and want to know why we're still getting our butts kicked, 
because you ain't warring in the spirit. That's why. So when I say catch fire, vanish by fire, because I'm coming against altars that you don't even know exist against your family. That horse that's riding in your family of addiction, that horse that's riding in your family of manipulation, of cheating, of lying, those are altars. Agreements with, with evil. And if we don't come against it, guess what? You're going to continue to pass it on to the next generation. You just don't get to say a prayer one time and think you've broken it. We are Jesus. We're made of the earth. So that's why that kingdom come by will be done in earth is so important because we are the earth. And so we want the, the manifestation of God's plans, his purpose, and his prophecy fulfilled. And when prophecy is spoken over your life, it's just not going to drop out the sky. Now you've got to contend because adversity comes knocking after prophecy is spoken. Again, the devil doesn't know your future, but he knows your past and your patterns and your family lineage patterns. And that's what he rides on. So he knows exactly what your appetite is. He knows exactly your gambling addictions. He knows exactly your, your money hungry. He knows exactly, he knows exactly what it is. He knows exactly how you like them. He knows it. And so when we pray and we pass out a monthly warfare prayer in our congregation, you know, and some people read it and some people don't. Some people want to change it. Change it for what? You can't just say I'm breaking generational curses. Not if you ain't on your knees warring in the spirit. Nor if you ain't telling the Lord to answer by fire, you ain't breaking nothing. Because when the prophet stood there and he presented the offering and he asked the Lord to answer by fire, he was coming against Jezebel's altars, her agendas. Because she had infiltrated is the Israel, Israel. She had infiltrated the Israelites. She was sitting next to the king. She had his ear. Jezebel looks for government. She's not red lipstick and red nail polish and, and high heels. She looks for government, influence, power, authority. That's what Jezebel is about. If I, if I may, it, it, it re time requires a different prayer. Con conditions that are happening in the earth for different times and different seasons, it requires a different type of prayer that God responds to and that, that he's waiting, waiting with bated breath for us to pray for him to, to respond to the prayer that's being requested of him. And, and in, the, to, in, in, in my perspective, based on what's going on right now in the earth. The prayers that, that need to be prayed is such that that was prayed when, when he asked God to answer by fire and to show the world, that known world, what, who God was for that time. So it's, it's, I think it's, an, it's very important. I think it's very important that, that we look at, the, uh, at our history and, and address certain times the way it was proven in history to, 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 to work, you know, because we're dealing with some stuff. We, we have to pray differently. We have to live differently. We have to witness differently. You know, it, it's, 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 it's just time for it. And if we continue to just continue to operate the way we've been operating, the enemy is going to come in and he's going to continue to establish what he wants to happen in the earth. And, and that's that's for, for the believer uh, accepting that is not an option. So many yes. have. Yeah. So many have. Yeah. yeah. Because we want God to do it all. So you got we got to get into some prayer and some fasting. We got to get into some warfare. And if you're not willing to warn the spirit, then you're not willing to apprehend the things that God has for you because you're going to have to fight to keep it. You're going to have to fight to maintain it. And the enemy doesn't want you to have, because everyone's voice has a, a number of souls connected to it. 
And so if he can stop you from witnessing, if he can stop you from declaring his goodness, if he can stop you from sharing your testimony, then you are now a tool in his toolbox. You may be a dull knife, a dull pair of scissors, but you're still a tool in his toolbox. And so it's just important. I'm sorry, I had to go there because, you know, we don't, I, I couldn't wait till we got to this portion of it. Because so many people, why does she pray against witchcraft? Why does she pray against altars, spells, and enchantments? Why do I return them back to the sender? Because David returned them back to the sender. Let them fall into their own pit. Let them slip in the darkness that they've set for me. David prayed, return to sender prayers. That's Psalms. <laughs> and so return to the sender. Let them witness and experience the pain that they desire for my life as they war against your predestined plan and purpose for my life. I always give it back to God. He created you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knew you. He set you apart to do whatever it is that he's called you to do. And so if someone has come against what God has called you to do, you better return it back to the sender. They don't want your kids to eat. Well, then guess what happens? When you war in the spirit, theirs don't. And then they get to experience how that feel. Because that's what Pharaoh is doing. He's experiencing the, the, the things that he has done. The, the direction he has led the people. I mean, he's led them into worshiping a frog <laughs> god. So here's your frogs. <laughs> he's led them into worshiping a fish god. Here's your, here's your, your fish. Here's your water. God is serious, especially in this season, as we get closer and closer to the return of our Savior. As we get closer and closer, he's serious about it. And we better be serious about it. Time out for these powder puff prayers. I'm tired of saints praying at 5.30 a.m. and can't discern nothing. You're supposed to be able to see and hear. If you can't see and hear after you praying and you need to get back on your knees, if you can't see in here after you're praying, then you need to switch prayer partners. Because we're supposed to be able to see and hear, and he doesn't do anything in the earth without revealing it to his prophets. And prophecy is for, in, for foresight, for insight, for warning, for direction, for affirmation and clarification. And we aren't, we're, we're, we're doing something fundamentally wrong because we have no discernment, none. And we're worshiping at the wrong altars because we're worshiping man and not the Lord. And he gonna send frogs. <laughs> he gonna say, what do you say that one, that one place scorpions? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we, we, have to, we, we have to do something different. We have to do something different. And, I, and it's my prayer that you hear me honestly, because I, it, above all things, we desire for you to fulfill your purpose and destiny, for you to walk in power and truth, for it to be passed on to a thousand generations. But we can't keep, we can't pass on now you, now you lay me down to sleep. It has to be. I mean, if we can't handle the footman, how will we handle the horseman? How are you going to handle the horseman in that promotion if you can't handle the pressure in this one? If you can't see and hear in this one, you'll get in the car with the wrong person and they'll be on a kamikaze mission. And you won't even know it. And so it's important for us to, to really seek the face of God because the hour is, is nigh. Jesus is coming back and we know everyone has said it, but we're on the cups of it. We're a thousand generations of it. We're on the cups of it. And so if we're at the brink of this, we must be found faithful over the assignment. Faithful, we must be diligent. Seeking the first, the kingdom and his righteousness. And let him add to us. And we're not doing that because we lack discernment. We lack discernment as a body of Christ. 
And so something has to change. I'm sorry I had to go there, but I just want to deal with that wicked power now because we don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about that. But the devil, he, he, he's intentional. And God is the superior, superior in his intentions. But the devil is intentional. Steal, kill, and destroy. To think that you're going to get anything other than that from him, you're, 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 you're deceived. Who bewitched you? <laughs> oh, Galatians. Who bewitched you? That's right. So people, pray fast. Ask the Lord to help you see so you can discern his voice. You know, we got so much going on in our environment. We don't even know who's talking to us. Am I right? We got so much going on, we don't even know who's talking to us. Was that you, God? Does it line up with his word? Um, can you look by the fruit that they bear? I mean, we don't use any of that. We just go with the flow and get on that kamikaze pilot. Right. And here you go. It's only going in one direction, right, Reverend Vines? Yeah. It's, it's fulfillment. It's, it's God's plan. It's, it's no, the kamikaze plan. pilot. Oh, and yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Sudden. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> My when verses six and seven, Aaron stretched out his hands. It's notable that once again, as is the case with the blood, uh, the, the plague of the, the, the turning of the Nile and the waters to blood, um, that the magicians, Pharaoh's, um, you know, Pharaoh's uh, bureaucrats, if you will, and technicians, better, better stated, um, they do the same thing. So, so again, Pharaoh, in order to, to replicate the point, and, and again, this is a demonstration of the, 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 the notion of the corruption uh, that's, that's, that's a part of any kind of oppressive power, that it, that it, that it always exhibits a depraved indifference to human life. And so the, and just to prove his point and to, main, and to uphold um, his uh, sense of powerment, and, and the system that's been constructed around him, uh, he has his, his magicians replicate the disaster upon his people. <laughs> and, and, more frogs. Yeah, and, and you know, we see that, we see that opera in operation, you know, in where our country is now. You know, it's, 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 it's funny, you know, Egypt was around two, 3,000 years before this. It would be around another 1,000 years after this. Uh, America is, what, 240-some years old <laughs> and is on the, on the, on, uh, and it's uh, literally falling apart. So um, it, it's, it's important to, 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 to own our history as these people did. Because it's, it's important to remember, in, according to the scriptures, um, Josiah locates the word of God that had been lost um, and, and, it, and it's written form um, in the temple. Um, and we're talking the seventh century, right? And then they, and they go about, uh, in, the, in the Bible says they read the word to the people and the people weep and repent. And, and Josiah is upheld as the one, you know, the, 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 the basically the heir uh, to the David, uh, to the Messiah, the messianic uh, lineage, that he's the one that's going to, the Bible says he's, he was greater than all the kings. And, and the people, uh, these these folk who keep getting run over by empires, <laughs> you know, the, they, they get run over by this, they're, they're here enslaved to the Egyptians, you know, they get run over by the, by the Syrians, they get run over by the Babylonians, they get run over by the, by the Greeks, they get run over by the, by the Romans and the New Testament, and here they are, this is their moment. Josiah is king. He's restoring, he's, he's, he's um, uh, restoring them and bringing them all into the the unified worship of Yahweh, burning the asterisks and all this, all this stuff. Um, and he goes to battle and he gets killed. And so here you, you have these people in trauma, point being that they're telling their, and this is, this is the era in which these scriptures are compiled uh, and they're compiled by a people who have lost everything, by a people who are in exile, by a people who've been over, again, overrun by power and are suffering under the brunt. Of, of, of oppressive power. That's what you're reading when you read uh, Jeremiah, when you read uh, Nahum, when you read uh, uh, you know, m m most of the so-called minor prophets and, and the major ones too. Um, and so the point is this, that these people are telling their history in a way 
that, that, that to help them make sense out of what they're confronting, out of what they're facing, out of their real day-to-day -day lives. They're writing their history, uh, compiling their, their folklore, their mythology, their history, their, you know, as brought down to them, compiling it in, in a way that because they're looking for God in the midst of it all. You know, where, you know, January 6th, God, where are you? You know, drive-by shootings, God, where are you? Country falling apart, God, where are you? Going, the this country descending into fascism step by step, God, where are you? And they're saying, we're gonna embrace our history and, and, and find, find the hope in the midst of how we tell our history. Um, and you know now that you know the 1619 project is out. Just got my copy, and uh, and it's that's an important thing. It's important for us to 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 claim not only the biblical history, but do what our ancestors did. Take this biblical history and see that as a continuum of our history and how God has has brought us a mighty long way. Um, you know, God of our weary years, God of our, our silent tears, God who has brought us this far, thus far along the way. Um, we have to embrace that because we have to do what they were attempting to do. A, find the hope and B, write the future. Amen. Amen. So a sick mindset will make it worse. And that's what Pharaoh did when he had his magicians turn it into more frogs. He just made the situation worse. And so again, kamikaze. And yeah. so this is good. I'm enjoying this lesson, you guys. Okay, shall we go on now? Verse eight, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, pray to the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people. And I will let your people go offer sacrifices to the Lord, to Yahweh. The Lord, Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs, except for those that remain in the Nile. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said, Moses replied, it will be as you say, so that you may know there is no one like the, your, of the Lord, our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people. They will remain only in the knot. Wow. So, so verse eight, we have the Pharaoh himself now, and for the first time in the narrative, acknowledging Yahweh as yeah. God and, and Pharaoh as, and uh, Moses as his emissary and actually asking Moses to pray for me to your God <laughs> uh, to, to, to ameliorate this disaster. That's too funny. That yeah, he's he, asking that for the help. Lord has upon him, yeah. upon them. He's asking for help now. Okay, yeah. okay. What is it called? Um, throwing in the no, it's not the white flag. Uncle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, uncle, <laughs> that's one too. Yeah. <laughs> uncle, uncle, uncle. I have cousins uncle. who like to wrestle. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have cousins who love to wrestle. And so, <laughs> and yeah. so he's like, ouch, okay, okay, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. help, help. <laughs> but he doesn't mean it he doesn't mean it you know and when a person's actions and their words are contradictory go with their actions not their words go with their actions because it's their actions tell you what their intent is it's their actions is what's putting things into on the path and bringing things to pass. It's not just the words. Because I can tell you that I love you and not feed you and go into my warm house. You know, there's a story of, um, I think it was in our devotional guide the other day. The gentleman was um, saw a homeless guy and he, was, he said to him, aren't you cold? He says, I've been out here so long. I've, I've, you know, tend to try to master the cold as much as I can. So I'm cold, but not as cold as I could be. Or should be. And he said to him, well, I'm going to go and get you a coat. And when he went into the house, he forgot to come back out. And when he came out the next day, the homeless man was dead. Now, the homeless man had been out there in the cold for, for days and was fine. But when he gave them a promise and shifted his mindset, he, was, he, he wasn't able to master it because he was looking forward to him fulfilling his word. You know, People don't honor their word. And people will look you straight in your eyes and lie to you to preserve and protect themselves. Self-preservation. And so Pharaoh is, is saying, help, stop, enough is enough. You win. <laughs> She's saying you win. <laughs> but we know what's going to happen next, right? So let's keep going. And it's, and, and it's interesting that Pharaoh's um, 
technicians as magicians um, can add to the disaster, can, can add to the disorder, but they can't restore order. He has to go uh, to the source of, of, of order and disorder um, in this scenario uh, to, to restore order. Um, also, um, I love the fact the way Moses mocks Pharaoh um, after having, I mean, we, we see this power, but we see throughout scripture this, because again, this is a story written by the people who are so often the least of the last, right? And so we see this last shall be first. We see this in all kinds of ways in birth order reversals uh, with, uh, you know, with David, uh, you know, being, being the youngest and, and being the one cho uh, chosen and anointed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We see it with uh, Elijah, and the, uh, Elijah and, the, and, the, and the prophets of Baal. Uh, we, we see this in and Jesus coming out of, you know, being uh, um, from the bottom, you know, being born out of in a manger and, you know, and, 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 and the, uh, uh, you know, we see this in the, in the crucifixion narratives and in John's version, the soldiers show up and, uh, you know, they ask if, if, if this is, if you're Jesus and he says, I am, and they all bow, <laughs> you know, and then Jesus commands them to let let the people go. We, of course, see it in, in the, cru the, the crucifixion of, of Jesus and the rising and triumph. We see this as a theme throughout scripture. And so we see in it here where there's a, this, this reversal of power um, that, that's, that's taking place uh, progressively through these plagues, where now we have, again, Pharaoh acknowledging Yahweh for the first time and Moses assuming uh, po a position of power that he never had. So now Moses is mocking Pharaoh. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you the courtesy of uh, schedule uh, when, when I will do for, for you? you what you need me to do for you. Because given that you can't do it for yourself, Mr. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh, who's supposed to be the one in position that maintains the order, the divine order of the, co of the, of the cosmos. Well, you know, you can't do that, can you? Well, you know right. what? I'll let you let me know when you want me to help you out, dog. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, isn't it, they, they could not heal, they could not repair, they could not reverse the destruction. And often when a person is destroying something, that is an indication that they cannot, you know, that they're out of control, that they have great fear, that they know that they're losing. And they, you can't heal where you've been broken. And so these guys are destroying the the environment destroying the lives of the people adding more pressure to it adding more frogs to it and now they need god don't add to your problem and then call on him call on him before you have a problem call on him when you see the problem coming because if you're praying and, and and fasting and you're spending time with him and meditating he's going to show you the problem coming he's going to show you He'll show you their battle strategy. He'll show you, God will show you what's going on behind closed doors. If you pray and fast, if you spend time in his presence, if you saturate your atmosphere with him. He just wants to be with you. And if he spends time with you, then he's going to show you great and mighty things that you did not know. He will reveal his mystery. His mysteries. Ah, Oh, are we together? <laughs> I'm writing about it. <laughs> I'm writing about it. Wow. We're together now. Wow. Reveal his mysteries. And so it's important for us to not do what we're seeing Pharaoh do. And what's really funny is Moses is having all this fun. And he, God knows what, Mo, what Pharaoh's going to do next. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's dangerous for God to give you enough rope to hang yourself. Huh? It's dangerous when God gives you enough rope to hang yourself. So pursue him that he can show you his mysteries. I mean, once you sup at his table, you don't want to eat no, nowhere else. Yeah. Wow. I'm, 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 yeah. Mysteries. Yeah. That's, that's a big one for me right now. That's a, yeah, that's a big one for me right now. The, I, says, I find it kind of funny. As, yeah, things. yeah. I mean, it's, if we don't, if we don't, if we continue to deny the mysteries of God, you know, just his, his, <laughs> him doing whatever and however, whenever he wants to do it, you know, you know, through whom or what, whatever he wants to do it through speaking of a donkey, you know, all of that is, all of that is, 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 it's a mystery for us to, you know, to either accept as his truth 
or or to deny, you know. And if we if we choose continue to choose to deny the reality of God's mystery, you know, you know, we our our understanding will we'll remain in darkness. You know, our our understanding of who God is, you know, as much as he he's revealed of of who he is, we'll never get a greater. You know, we won't really get a great understanding of who he is. And and, and when we don't get a better understanding of who he is you know, and all you're getting, getting understanding. So you can become what he wants you to be, you know? So it's, um, the, the mysteries is a, is, a, is a great thing. And I, and I found it funny also how God was, uh, he, he was just kind of just destroying the economy within, <laughs> within fair, you know, because they would, you know, make figurines of their gods and, you know, they would sell, you know, and all this, you know, he was just, he was just messing with all of that, you know? Because he was just that was it was a sacred thing. He used yeah, something yeah. sacred of theirs. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's their sacred yeah. cow, if you will. Right, right, right. Of, <laughs> something sacred kids. of theirs. <laughs> right. And yeah. and now with in, in their desire, because they were known for being clean, clean. Mm-hmm. And so cleanliness is a sign of godliness. Mm-hmm. And so for them to have these frogs now in abundance, yeah. and now yeah. what is about to happen. You know, that's a that's a double whammy against their pantheon. Yeah. And here God is just commanding Aaron to raise a stick, (laughs) you know, (laughs) for each of their little guys. (laughs) Again, everything natural. Amen. (laughs) So anyway, yeah. Verse 12, after Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses Mm -hmm. cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards and in the fields. They were piled into heaps and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw there was release, verse 15, but when Pharaoh saw there was relief, he hardened his heart and would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Who hardened his heart? He hardened in his own heart this time, right? He's been doing it throughout. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. But there are times when when God hardens his heart. This time he hardens his own. Right. I think he does. Yeah, I think God states that he does it toward the as we go on, uh, the last No, it's two both ends. So sometimes it's God both. does it, sometimes Pharaoh does it. And then in this instance, Pharaoh is doing Pharaoh. it. He okay. asks for God to help. God helps. He intervenes. He does what he, he asks. And then mm-hmm. he goes back to being who he was. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 You're right. Yeah. How often do we do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do, this, is, this is the reprobate mind. Help, 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 Lord. SOS, smoke signals. <laughs> and then the Lord pulls us out and then we go right back. You know, that's that 360, not a 180. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting in these, yeah. in, in, these, in these preceding plagues that there's, it always refers to, the, comes back to the stench and and uh the, mm. the, the stank of it all and 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 it's, it's just kind of the the the, the irony the, the 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 uh sub, the subversive irony of it um that re- if you recall if we recall when uh the the when pharaoh made them make ordered them to make bricks without straw withheld the straw the, the supply side uh chain a supply chain to uh to make bricks um, after, in response to Moses and Aaron's initial uh, confrontation with Pharaoh, the, the complaint of the people su- suffering under this added burden um, was that, see, look what you've done. You've made us a stench uh, to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians. And so, you, again, we see that, that power reversal. Um, also, the hardening of the heart. Um, as we said, you know, God does it at times. Um, Pharaoh does it. Um, of course, one thing we know about about corruption, about corrupt powers, that is perfectly predictable. Um, it's going to do what it does. Mm. You know, we 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 mm. we see that throughout history. But the 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 hardening of the heart, from the point of view of the Egyptians, had a had a had a had a different connotation. Um, the 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 heaviness of the heart, hardness slash heaviness, the the mass, <laughs> if you will, uh, of the heart. Um, had a real resonance because in their theology, in the Egyptian uh, Book of the Dead, uh, the Book of the Coming Forth by Day and by Night, um, the, the, their, in their theology, in their understanding of the afterlife, um, the person's heart would get weighed on the scale. Um, the heart on one side, 
the feather of mayat of, of truth on the other side of righteousness, truth, whatever. And um, if the heart was heavier than that, if the heart was lighter than that, if the, then that person would go on into the, the blessed afterlife. If the heart was heavier than that, was harder than that, if you will, that's the, the, the connection that then that person would be, that heart would be devoured um, by, by the underworld, you know, demon or whatever. And so the point is that, that, that God is, is the hardening of Pharaoh's heart also has the connotation of God judging his heart, um, mm -hmm. of, of, of God weighing his heart. Um, of God weighing where his, his life is, where his head is, where his values are, um, and finding, and, 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 and in this context of maintaining corrupt power, um, his, he, Pharaoh himself adds weight from his own perspective, in his own theology, adds weight to his heart. Hmm. Don't have a heavy heart. <laughs> Don't have a heavy heart. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You got to yeah. line your heart up with the will of God, the way of God. This is, I mean, this is ridiculous, but this is what we do. We think we can outsmart God. And so if he thought that the play, the, the frogs were a challenge for him. Now we're about to get a little bit microscopic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like oh, okay. oh, you gonna play me like that? That's what the Lord yeah, said. Yeah. Oh, you didn't mean it. He said, "Let me oh, really you show just you something." Said that? Right. So you, when you said you love me, you didn't mean it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. When you said right. help, you'll you'll stop. You didn't mean it. Okay, mm. then I'm gonna give you something that's gonna be just a little bit different. Right. You can see those. <laughs> so we go on, darling. Verse sixteen. <laughs> and my apologies, I forgot that. The, I, the flies and the nets hadn't happened yet. So sorry, I buried the lead. But verse 16, <laughs> um, then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. They did this when Aaron and, and when Aaron stretched out his hand and the staff struck the dust of the ground, gnats came upon men and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their sacred arts, they could not and the gnats were on men and animals. The magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God, but Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. Do you remember that season we had those, what do we call those fruit flies, baby flies everywhere? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? They were just <laughs> everywhere. That Was that two years ago, three years ago? Something like that. Yeah. They were in yeah. restaurants, in Stores in a movie theater, they're in homes, they were just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like flies, you know. <laughs> Ugh, flies. They eat garbage. They mm. eat dead things, right? The uh, mm. maggots. Ah. Uh. And so, uh, you know, we travel <laughs> over, so right. Uh. And so here we are, you know, would you rather have a frog or a maggot? I mean, a frog or a, or a gnat. You know, neither, as yeah. David said, I'd rather be in your hands, Lord. <laughs> but at least you can eat the, the frog. Of my <laughs> enemies, huh? yeah. Right. And so, uh, but they can eat the frog. Hey. <laughs> That's right. You can fry them joke as hell. Come on now. No, Asian. No, what are you <laughs> Jerk them. Jerk them. Jerk some frog legs. <laughs> no, no, no. Fricassee. Bring us in. <laughs> Sorry, I think that yeah, was a little bugs bunny for us, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> but you know, now he's taking on a whole different level. They were not able to 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 duplicate this. So now the game that he's Andy up now. The game has gone to another level. And so now, what do you do? Pharaoh, what do you do, kamikaze pilot, when the ante has been upped? Now your own people are saying, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh still doesn't listen. He still doesn't listen. So here he had this, this play again. He didn't tell him this one was coming. He didn't tell him this one was coming. Mm -hmm. But it made sense. I mean, what comes when you have a bunch of dead things around? Hmm. He's using, utilizing again the ecosystem 
to address the matter. And so what would, what would consume it? The dead frogs, flies, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so everybody gotta eat. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. That was you a joke. You did it again. Then I, I'm here all week. <laughs> you did it again. And so he didn't announce this, this particular plague, but this is plague is so in line with his ecosystem. Because when something dies, we get frogs and maggots, right? I mean, we get flies and maggots. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just saw that. I'm sorry. Yeah, You're not yeah. the only scientist on the, on the screen, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, the, 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 um, magicians not being able to of course this is as you put it as you as you point out this is a major uh change because now even the 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 magicians the technicians have to acknowledge that this is a greater power than we can contend with at work here that we have no control over this we have no no sway over this at all and the word for for that that for could not that um, in the Hebrew pronounced something like Yakol. Um, I don't pronounce Hebrew, so you Hebrewists out there, Hebrew linguists out there, forgive me. Um, but um, it, it, it's used elsewhere um, without the in the in the positive. Uh, uh, excuse me, in the yeah without the negative. Um, in uh, in in uh, Genesis 32, 28, 6 to twenty eight, uh, when Jacob prevails, he he wrestles against the 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 figure at night. Um, the, the, uh, and, and, and he prevails. It's used in Jeremiah 20 when Jeremiah in, 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 in his uh, um, angst uh, says, oh Lord, you deceived me and I was in his pain, uh, said, oh Lord, you deceived me and I was deceived. You overpowered me and, pre and, and prevailed. And so in, this, in the Jacob sense, Jacob prevails in, uh, in, in, in Jeremiah's sense, he does not prevail. Um, and certainly in these magicians, uh, they do not prevail. <laughs> It shows the relentlessness of it, the um, the the drive and motivation, the um, the laser focus of the of what was before them. I mean, now you have, I mean, flies. They are hard to to catch. Um, <laughs> you know, we travel overseas often, and when you sit down to eat, we know if we ordered this, we're going to track a lot of flies. If we ordered this, we might get a couple, but we're not going to get as many. But we know mm -hmm. <laughs> if a seafood is coming, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming, yeah. yeah, they're coming with the plate. <laughs> so right. we know how to <laughs> you <can> say that, right? <laughs> you do that. And I'm sorry to be so graphic to some people, but when you try to eat your food, <laughs> so <laughs> right, it's either the fly can eat it or you go eat it. Okay, the, uh, the bottom line is you still have to pay for it. Right, right, you pay so, for it, right? <laughs> and to add to so the horror, was, huh? I'm sorry. To add to the horror of this, the word that's translated into uh, flies, that word can actually mean and uh, any number. Uh, it can be mosquitoes, lice, uh, you know, uh, biting gnats. Um, uh, you know, the word can mean it. It 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 it, it uh, refers to any number of the kind of uh, insects that would accompany um, an environment of death and decay that's been created uh, by the resistance uh, to liberation. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Right. So I don't want to talk anymore about the. Right. Uh. <laughs> so you have flies, Ooh. gnats, and mosquitoes, and all insects uh. coming together from one strike of a stick on the ground on dust. On the okay. ground. That's okay. right. That's right. Get up, y'all. Right. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> Time to eat. Is the Lord, isn't he a good God? The fly said, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. You're saying like Yahweh is Lord of the flies. Yeah, that's no, what we're saying. That's not, saying. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, but he did create the flies. He did create the flies. And the flies are there to 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 get rid of what is decaying, what is dying among us. And so he again is utilizing the ecosystem. So yes, the flies, if you don't cry out, the rocks will and the flies will. They'll say thank you. <laughs> They'll say, I <laughs> tell Andrew and Dora, it's Andrew's little prayer when it's time to eat. Thank you, Jesus, for this food. Amen. While the the fork is almost going into his mouth. You know, I'm like, well, can you pray for the people who don't have anything to eat? Ask the Lord to bless them. <laughs> You know, so the flies are like, thank you, Jesus. Right, right. 
Right, because they're, but this again, he's using his ecosystem. He, he, he does not operate outside of his system, his ways, his methodology. You're not going to make God be who he's not. And so, yes, he's using his he's using the systems that he put in place to defeat Pharaoh, to prove to Pharaoh that he is the sovereign God and the pantheons of gods that they have. And the one that sits on the throne of Egypt have no power compared. And that's what we see. Verse 20, then the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the water and say to him. This is what the Lord says, let my people go so they may worship me, so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and even the ground where they are. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that it is I, the Lord, uh, that sorry, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. Wow, so you hear what he's saying. You can't do any animal sacrifices, but my people can. You won't be able to worship your gods, but my people will be able to worship me. Because he said on beasts, right? Upon their homes, upon the beast, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was there. On them, yeah. yeah. So he's stopping Egyptian um, I, um, yeah. sacrificial worship, but he said in Goshen, mm -mm, they're not going to have any problems. They're going to still be able to worship Yahweh. Mm. Okay, that's what I saw. I'm sorry. Well, so, well, no. <laughs> and here we have in the first time yeah. God is making a distinction, uh, a clear cut distinction in terms of where, in terms of the the, the, the targeted, if you will, of this saturation bombing that, that he's committing over Egypt, um, that, that this is going to be uh, what they call uh, a targeted set bombing that never quite is totally hits their target, but that's neither here nor there. That's, that's, that's modern <laughs> time. I'm, I'm, I'm retrojecting uh, <laughs> modern time. But yeah, God is, is making a clear distinction that I am, I am the God of, I'm protecting my people. Uh, not yeah. only from you, but from the things I am doing to you. <laughs> and, and, and that's a, that's a major turn in the text. We haven't seen, it's implied, we, it's presumed uh, before, but this, this time it's being made explicit to Holy Pharaoh Lord. that these people are under my protection. And again, the severing of these people uh, from both psychological, theological, and political uh, control of, uh, of, of Egypt. Keep in mind, these people, are not a people. There are a people, there are a, a amorphous group of, of immigrants coming from the, the region over time that have multiplied both by birth and by immigration. They are not, they are, they are in the process of becoming a people. God is in the, in the narrative, Yahweh God is in the process of shaping them into a people. And, they, and their depth, their, 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 um, the shaping of their people is in the image of their liberation that they are being defined by what is happening and what God is doing with them and through them now. Yeah, he wanted them to know these people are special to me. So when I said yeah. send them so that they can worship me, mm -hmm. I meant it. Yeah. I want time with them. And you know what's interesting when God wants time with you, <laughs> he go make sure he gets it sure one way or the other, yeah. you know, and so you can, you can make your way and you can skip with joy into his presence or he can drive you into his presence. But when he wants some FaceTime, he's going to get it. That's right. He wants some FaceTime. He's going to get it. <laughs> you know, I, uh, have a, I have a, a pattern. Don't, don't laugh at me. But every time I get up to go to the bathroom at night, I pray before I get back in bed. I know it's weird. But hmm. and so, you know, I make it I make a distinction. So I make sure that I don't drink water at a certain time because I really would love to sleep throughout the whole night. You know, when I wake up, I'm getting older. But uh, also, you know, I saw the Lord one morning. I said, you just want to see me. No, you just want to talk to me. <laughs> drink anything. And you just want to talk to me, don't you? <laughs> and so... So as I get on my knees, I was like, did you miss me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You know, come on, love on him. Have that type of relationship with him. He's the lover of your soul. 
He gave his life, his son's life for you. No greater love hath any man than this, that he lays down his life for his friend. You are no longer strangers or foreigners, but your citizens and your members of the household of God. We are royal priests. So come on. So get in his presence. You're going to either skip into it with joy or he's going to drive you into it with opposition. But when he wants to see you, he's going to see you because he's your, you're his. So skip into his presence. Make time with him so that you don't have to get reacquainted. You know, I know it's, it's a little difficult for men when I start saying, you miss me, don't you, Lord? But, but you know how to talk to him. He's right. your dad. What's up, daddy? You know, I was going to check in anyway. <laughs> right. Come on. Have that relationship with him. It's a love relationship. It's a love relationship. And if you're not talking to the father like someone that loves you and you love him, then that's part of the challenge of your outcomes. It's a love relationship. I mean, I really said it to him. I was like, you just want to hear me. Just want to see me, don't you, Abba? And I was, and he and I spent time, you know? And so have that relationship with him. Talk to him. Talk to him. And ladies, come on. Ain't no man going to do us better than Jesus. Sorry, brothers. Mm. Ain't no man's going to do us better than Abba. So everything you would say to your lover, say to the Lord. I miss you. You know, you get home from work, you're in traffic, you're talking to him. But when you get home, you can ooh, focus on him. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Hey, right. You walk in the door, honey, I'm home. Abba, I'm home. Let me get these shoes off. Get this food going so we can sit down and chit chat. How was your day? Let me tell you about mine. Have a love relationship. He's the lover of your soul. And that's what David had. David had a love relationship with him. You know, and I'm going to, can I, can I just deviate for one second? Because I've been talking to this about everybody, but I haven't said this on this video. And I want to say it so bad because people get the David and Jonathan relationship kind of crazy. And, and, and I wanted, I wanted to be clear what I see. Let me, because I ain't right all the time, but let me, this is what I see. Okay. Unless you've given up a throne, you ain't Jonathan. Jonathan was next for the throne, but Yahweh said it was David. Jonathan's love was for God and David. His love wasn't just for David. He was willing to give up his position because he was the next son in line for the throne because Yahweh, the God he served, the God he loved, the God he trusted, said it was David. So unless you're giving up a throne, you cannot be Jonathan. So many people try to do that. You're not Jonathan when you benefit from that individual's influence. But you ain't sacrificed nothing. Jonathan loved the Lord, hence he loved David. He followed the Lord, hence he followed David. He gave up everything for the Lord, hence he was willing to give up everything for David. But if you're not giving up a throne, then you ain't Jonathan. If they're not taking your spot, you're not Jonathan. And I'm just, I, I'm so tired of hearing it. I'm, I'm going to be this, their Jonathan. No, you're not. No, you're not. If you're not giving up your stuff so they can have it, you're not Jonathan. Jonathan gave up his throne. He was next in line after his father. So I'm, I'm going to get on my little soapbox now. Back to David. So David loved the Lord. And that's why we have all these songs. These are his love songs to the Lord. That's why we have all these psalms. These are his love songs to the Lord. You know, and so men, it's important. David is your example on how to talk to the Lord. Ladies, we know how to talk to men. And if you don't know how to talk to men, then you need to follow David, okay? <laughs> until you learn how to talk to a man because I've learned some women don't know how to talk to men and it's important that you know how to talk to a man you're gonna get something done <laughs> so, so, 
<laughs> right. Nobody wants to be yelled at. Nobody wants to be attacked. Right. Nobody wants to be demeaned. So it's important to learn how to talk to human beings. But most importantly, you know, learn to talk to your man. But when you're dealing with the Lord, love on him. Love on him. So whisper sweet nothings in his ear. That's right. Let him know that everything you're doing, you're sharing it with him. It has to be beautiful. It has to be beautiful. Because we'll tell the, the guy or the gal that that's there for one night <laughs> more than we tell the Lord who's been there from the beginning. And who will be there beyond the end? Who was there before the beginning? Who will be there beyond the end? So love on the Lord. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really glad you're saying that. I mean, I mean, especially for men, because you know, a, a man loving on God that way he couldn't be viewed as being soft or something like that. You know, David um, wasn't soft. But David wasn't soft. He was a mighty warrior. He just ah, <laughs> he, strong and mighty. You know, he was a strong, mighty warrior. Together. You know, he was he was dual. <laughs> you know, he yeah. He, but yet he wrote songs, you know, of love. You know, ex, uh, uh, expressive songs from the heart uh, to to his God, whom he trusted in. So, uh, you know, and, and that's a challenge, you know, for men. That can be a challenge for some men. But um, but like you said, I mean, David is a great, a great example of us, you know, as men acknowledging the existence of God and, and what he's done for us through sending his son and saving us and giving us and providing and caring and all of that, you know, and, and it's OK. You know, it's OK to to love on God that way when you come home after work and say to him, Father, <laughs> Man, you we good. We made it. Man, I appreciate you. <laughs> That's <laughs> you right. Know? We made it. Thank you. Thank you know, you, we you. did it. We did it today. Thank you. You know, uh, so it's it's okay. Of course, our language is different than women, but but still express it. Be okay to express your 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 love for him. It's a it's a great right. thing. Yeah. Because this is what he's showing in the text. He's letting mm -hmm. Pharaoh know these people are important to me. They're special to me. I love them. And I love them to the degree that I'm going to afflict what you utilize to worship your God, but I'm going to spare theirs mm -hmm. so they can worship me so that they can spend time with me so we can have our love relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what I see in this text. And so I think it's, I just think it's beautiful. Oh, his love songs. Are he such a, just, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. <laughs> I love him. I love him. I love him. In that uh, 23rd verse, um, it, you know, it's interesting that that, that, plague, the plague of the flies, is basically a replication of the previous plague, right? Um, so, the, but the distinction, and, and Yahweh is, is voiced at, at making the distinction in that 23rd verse, that the, that, that, that the distinction between God making the explicit distinction between his people, the, 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 the people he's liberating, and the systems, the people, the systems of oppression that he's coming against, that he's, that he, on that, that the people that he on behalf of the people is coming against, um, that the, the, the God is, is voiced as saying, this is the sign, not the flies, the sign that I'm, protect, that I'm protecting my people, that I'm bringing my people through the backlash and the collateral damage of, uh, that, that always accompanies a progress. Um, and and you know, we as a people, we should be really clear um, so that we don't get discouraged and lose our hope and lose our faith um, and lose our, our, our trust and our vision um, and our, even our night vision um, of God um, in, this, in this very dark period in our country uh, and in its history. And that whenever we've made progress, there's been backlash. You, know, about, you, can't, you can't understand Trump and Trumpism unless you understand that they came immediately after eight years of Obama. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, so we made the progress, but then there's the this, the system, the, the the systems that were here at the at the root of the country's founding, and before then, there was a backlash. And so the point is that when the backlash comes, when the collateral damage comes, we shouldn't lose hope. We need to understand that God has made here in this text, and that's I think that was the meaning of it for people. Again, a people who are dealing with disaster, <laughs> you know, as mm -hmm. they 
rediscover and 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 write these texts. Um, this is the context that they're trying to find. God, where are you? Oh, God, you've brought us through the backlash. You've brought us through the conquest. You've brought us through the exile. You've brought us through. You again. You've brought us a mighty long way. Um, and 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 so the the and God said. And so I think that's the significance of God saying, "Not the flies. It's my distinction." my protection of my people yeah, from the yeah. backlash of, 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 of that, that's, good, that, that's coming at them in this revolution that's occurring here and that I'm bringing into being, that I am with my people through it all. Amen. Okay. Verse 24, yeah. and the Lord did this. <laughs> Dense swarms kind of, of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. And throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, go sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, that would not be right. The sacrifices we offer the Lord our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? We must, uh -oh, we must take a three day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to our, to our God as he commands us. Then Moses, oh, excuse me, Moses answered, verse 29, Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I'm sorry, I'm, my, my phone is acting up. Here we are. Uh, verse 28, Pharaoh said, I will let you go offer sacrifices to the Lord, your God in the desert, but you must not go very far. Now pray for me. Moses answers, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only be sure that Pharaoh, on, only be sure that Pharaoh to the Lord. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And, and the Lord did what Moses asked. And the flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly remained. But this time also, Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let his people go. And that is the end of chapter eight. Wow. Compromise. Always trying to get you to compromise on what you know you should be doing. Isn't that what evil does? Okay, you can sacrifice. Just do it right here. Sacrifice is a sacrifice. You hear you hear Cinco. <laughs> hey, hi, pretty girl. And so it is this is what the Lord does. Um, this is what the Lord is saying, and this is what the enemy does. He wants you to always compromise, to not to to not do exactly what the Lord said, but do a version of it. You know, delayed um obedience is still disobedience. And modification of the plan is still disobedience. <laughs> you know, unless the Lord tells you to modify the plan, unless he instructs you to, then you have to do it exactly the way he said. And so it was a three-day journey. Not a, we can do it right here under Pharaoh's supervision. And so, again, the enemy always wants you to modify it. He always wants you to compromise to listen to them while you remained enslaved to the oppression and the wickedness. And we also have a continuation of the theme of the power reversal, um, or not in, also in a, you know, in, in support of that, we have the, 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 the power reversal. Now Pharaoh, Pharaoh has began by utterly dismissing uh, both God, uh, uh, Yahweh and Moses and Aaron. Um, then it was um, resistance. Um, you know, now he's forced to acknowledge his weakening position. Um, he's a, his 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 impetus his impotence um, in uh, ameliorating or, or or dealing with it all these disasters that this this saturation bombing that Yahweh is is committing uh, uh, over 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 Egypt. And now he's forced to negotiate with Moses, and he he understands. He sees himself as under uh, that that he has lost his power, and he must negotiate with Moses. So, like any negotiator, particularly one who's trying to hold, who's in power and trying to hold under power, he's trying to get something for it. So, yeah, I'll let you go, but uh, you know, now yeah, why don't you do it here? And of course, doing it here would completely sabotage the whole point of it. Um, you know, if 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 they worship Yahweh under the authority of Pharaoh, then they're denying the authority of Yahweh. <laughs> and so that's a non-starter from, from, from Moses' perspective. And again, the power reversal. You know, Moses has, has, has identified his non-negotiable, um, both spiritual and political, his non-negotiable. It's like, no, that's not gonna work. 
and and so Pharaoh uh, uh, and and the interesting thing here is Pharaoh now and Moses both are in complete agreement of the efficacy of, of the potency of Pharaoh's, of, of Moses's prayers and of Yahweh's actions. Uh, note that in this, in this, for the first time in this mm -hmm. plague, Pharaoh, I mean, excuse me, Yahweh does it himself. He doesn't even, there's no Aaron spread your, your staff. There's no Moses speaking to it. God does this directly. There's an intensification of this war, if you will, of this, of this revolution that's taking place. And, and God does it himself. And now Pharaoh is forced to acknowledge, wow, okay, I'm, 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 out, I'm out muscled here. <laughs> so I better go into negotiations. The, the doing it right here won't work. So then Pharaoh says, okay, well, don't go. I, I'm, I understand the weakness of my position. Just if you could just not go very far. <laughs> you know, if you could just stay uh, somewhere close by. Um, and, and of course, Moses just at this point just absolutely um, ignores uh, that. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and 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 uh, praise to the Lord to to remove the flies. Yeah. You know, to do anything that Pharaoh was offering, this compromise would be like sacrificing a sacred cow in Hindu. You know, it would be like a Muslim eating a pig. You know, they don't do those things, and so we, you have to stick to the you have to stick to the agenda, the precepts, the outlines, the the directions, if you're gonna get the outcome that you desire. I mean, God isn't going to, he's not going to go beyond, uh, he's not gonna go outside of his agenda to, to satisfy you. He's not gonna go outside of his ways to please you, to make it convenient for you. And we just gotta get out of this mindset of convenience. You know, Pharaoh was just, he, the reality is he knew he was losing grip of this situation. And again, as you pointed out, Reverend Powell, this one, God didn't invite anyone to participate yeah. in. He did it himself mm -hmm. because he was making it clear. This is about me and my people and you in the way. <laughs> and yeah. your, your plane is about to, yeah, this year, a kamikaze pilot, buddy, and, and your time is up. Yeah, and, and the, the distinction that um, that is said here and, and, and Greg emphasizing, Reverend Powell emphasizing, you know, just distinction. I mean, the between, you know, the uh, the, the Egyptians and, and, and God's people, you know, it, you know, just, it's, it's like the, the separating of the wheat and the tear. I mean, as you're saying, God, that is something that God's going to do, you know, uh, but, but us being distinct is, is, has been, and will always be um, the heart of God, you know, because we, we are his people and there is this, you know, there, there's, we're just separate from the world, you know, uh, and he's going to ensure that that distinction is made, you know, and if, if, if we're unwilling to, to, you know, to challenge ourselves to be comfortable with that, that distinction, you know, if we're unwilling to do that, you know, we, we, the only thing we will do is compromise, you know, and, and we can't compromise. It's, it's a distinction. It's, it's a distinction. And when you live out that distinction, you know, there's no room for compromise. It's, 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 it's God's way. It's Yahweh's way. You know, it's his way. You have to trust him on that magnitude. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, to, yeah. the Shunammite woman, yeah. go into Shunammite mode. Yeah. Don't listen to what no one else is saying. I don't care who they are. Go yeah. into Shunammite mode and make it happen. You know, God gave you a promise. He gave you a plan. He gave you a word. So go into Shunammite mode and make it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. she saddled her horse and she said, ride and don't wait for me unless I tell you to. But we go into the prophet because the prophet is the one who gave it to me. The Lord through the prophet, the Lord gave it to me through the prophet. And so I'm going back to the source. To, to bring it back to life, to, to bring back what the Lord has, what has been taken from me. And so that's what we often forget to do. We go to everyone else and we let people talk us out of our pursuit, our fight for. And so the Lord is saying, listen here, I don't need them, him, that, or you. I got it. <laughs> Pharaoh said, I will let you go. And the Lord says, you not let nothing happen. That's right. That's right. And if you won't let them worship, I'm not going to let you worship. 
Because now your beast got it too. Yeah. Because a swarm, <laughs> you can't do nothing in the swarm. <laughs> I think it was like per hectare or something like that when the locusts were in, in East Africa. I think they said a swarm consisted of like a billion locusts, you know? <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> or more, you know, so a swarm, it, it, you can't do nothing. You can't worship, you can't, you can't sell, you can't borrow, you know, it's, it's locked down. All of you Egypt rest. is suffering. That's right. He, God dismantled every system, demonic system, selfish system that the, in, that, that was constructed in, within the whole, in, within all of Egypt, you know, and then to show his love for his people and the distinction, you know, he would pre, he didn't allow that to come upon them. You know, it, it's just a, you know, it's just a, it's, it's salvation, <laughs> you know, it's Jesus incarnate, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a picture of him. And, and what he does, you know, when, when oh, God, yeah. when he separates us for himself. Right. And as Amen. we journey through scripture, it's important to keep in mind that it's not static, right? That, that again, mm -hmm. these texts, have, you know, are, are, are people locating in disaster and exile and, and, mm -hmm. and having suffered, locating themselves in, 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 locating themselves in the world, locating themselves mm -hmm. in, 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 and locating their hope uh, in God. Um, God didn't hate all Egyptians, you know, God no, didn't hate all the Canaanites, God didn't, <laughs> and so, but there, but we see in the way, and, and that's why it's important to know the, 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 and to follow the progression of scripture, you know, we, we, because a lot of revelation happened between the sixth, between the seventh century and the birth of Jesus, and the, you know, the, the whole lot of revelation happened between, uh, you know, kill them all, <laughs> you know, about, about, you know, when I bring down the wall, go in and kill them all, uh, which we know is is their 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 principles in there, uh, but we know that that the whole notion of them going in and killing everybody, well, that's propaganda. They're telling their story, right? They're trying to locate themselves. There's a lot of revelation that happened between that and mm -hmm. for God so loved the world um, mm -hmm. that you know, and so you know we just should keep that in mind so that we don't become um, provincial uh, and we don't duplicate the 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 error, the tragic mm -hmm. error of those who would claim God exclusively as their own. To the detriment and the oppression of other people who yes. they then declare to be the devil. And we have to remember now, these other people worshiped other gods. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when they went around Jericho and they and to tear um, to knock the walls of Jericho down, they didn't go inside to take anything, but everyone was destroyed because it was an altar. It was an enemy that was going to continue to rise up. They didn't serve the same God. And so we, um, and there was no, no conversion for them, no repentance for them. And so it's, uh, the, the battles that we're in in our society today are so different. Ours are based upon the color of our skin. It's based upon economics. It's based upon greed. It's based upon, you know, debauchery. It's based upon, you know, the desire to want it all and to decide how much you can get. It's not based upon worship. You know, and even with the um, with what's going on in the Middle East, the Taliban and with the um, the other group, I can't remember. I've been so out of touch with the news, but their their it's whole Israelis. purpose. Is, <laughs> no way, Greg. It's not what I was saying. <laughs> oh, my bad. Not, <laughs> but I hear what you're saying. <laughs> right. It's the other group, the Taliban and Al Qaeda. Right, there it right, is, right. Taliban and Al Qaeda, right? Even with them, I mean, it's all about power and greed. It's not about worship. It's about power and greed. It's not about worship. They 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 pretend that it's about worship, but it's the Roman Catholic, the Crusaders. It's power and greed. They pretend it was about worship, but it's power and greed. And so. We um, it, it is a different the the battles that we're seeing we see in the text versus the battles that we see in humanity today are totally different. And so um, I think that um, when the Lord says destroy it all, it's because they were an altar. It was a battle of gods. And so we um, but we just have a responsibility to be like Christ. Stop it, little boy. And we don't want to be. Okay, bite my foot. He just want to be like Christ. Okay, I'm gonna cut off right now. Okay, yeah, no, we don't, no, no. don't want to be like Christ because it gives us it requires too much. But if you from too much is given, much is required, and we want a lot, but we don't want to sacrifice nothing. And everything comes with a sacrifice. 
You can't get a harvest without planting seeds. And it's according to your faith. And But know this, at night, the enemy comes and he plants among it. So if you, if you in your deep sleep, wake up so that you can be aware of what's going on. Fast and pray so we can have some discernment up in here. Because right now, we lack discernment. And we're walking around puffed up. And pride is before the fall. Pride yeah. is before the fall. And so we need to get we need to get back in tune with the spirit of God. We need to pursue him. We need to pursue him and we'll pay the price for it. And, yeah. it, and it's my desire. Nobody um, is hurt. It's my desire that no one is punished. So get in his presence and hear what he's saying. Fast and pray and stop letting others direct your path. Uh, Atlanta housewives and wonk, wonk, wonk. Right? That's right. Yeah, and 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 to your points, yeah, it's you know, I mean, he Jesus came for humanity. God came for for hu humanity, even in Egypt, you know. And as the story plays out, we're going to see just how great God's love is for humanity. You know, He chose Abraham. You know, you know, so um, you know, He's He's coming. He's He He came and and to rescue and and to and to free humanity then and he his agenda has not it has not changed and and like you're saying Reverend, like we have a we have a responsibility to make sure that that we that we that we spread that love <laughs> you know and 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 the the gospel you know to every the four corners of the of the earth and that that's every nation that's every that's every people that's every language you know so yeah i yep yeah, we we got work to do we got work to do. When we, when we were going into Sierra Leone, they said, this is predominantly Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're not going to give them water, are you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we're going to tell them Jesus did it. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you yeah. guys can close out because of the donkey. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Oh, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again for, <laughs> for joining all four of us today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, and I hope you enjoyed uh, our Bible study, MythBusters Bible study today. And we're just—it's um, an honor just to um, to just to, to to go through the Bible with you. And and we pray that you heard something uh, that has transformed your heart, and um, you know, and brought more understanding to you. Uh, and and as you continue your journeys, uh, so we pray in the name of Jesus that um, that uh, that you would. Today, make Jesus Lord of your life if you haven't already. You know, it's a, it's a simple thing to do. He, he set the plan out before us, and he's made it so simple for us to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is the Son of God and that God rose, that, that he raised him from the dead for the remission of our sins. He died for us. He died for all of us. You know, there's no great sin that, that is unforgivable um, in, in according to his word. You know, so it's as simple. If you pray this prayer with me today, you can make Jesus Lord of your life. So if you would pray with us. Jesus, come and live in my heart. Be Lord of my life. I confess to you that I am a sinner, but I also confess and I repent of my sins. And I pray that you would become Lord of my life. Jesus, become Lord of my life today. And if you prayed that prayer with us today, today you are saved. Today, God has rescued you as he did the children of Egypt. God bless you. Go to newfaith.org. That's newfaith.org. If you'd like to become a member of our amazing ministry, we are not a perfect people, but we serve a perfect God and we are committed to the ways of God and the truth of God and the, the agenda of God. We love you. See you next week. That's newfaith.org. See you on Sunday, 10 a.m. streaming live. One love.